I'm a big YouTuber. Salute to Crowned TV Courts on YouTube. Check out my homie Prince, you know what I'm saying? They cover all high-profile court cases on behalf of the people. Great execution with regards to legal, parameters, documents. I literally cover court cases for a living. I cover the court cases for a living. I think that it's amazing that a black man is sitting on a platform breaking down the law. If you don't have a shout out from Millie on your channel, I don't even want to talk. I'm geeked up and I'm feeling myself. Shout out to the Royal Fam and shout out to the Mob. Thank you for the support y'all been showing me. If you're not tuned in and you're not subscribed to Mob Radio, click off, go subscribe and come back. It's all good. Shout out to Millie and shout out to Mob Radio. All right, y'all. This is going to be a two prong two-purpose video. We're going to talk about the case against Jelaine Little, who is facing about a thousand years. We're going to break down every charge and what they mean, and we're also going to break down what the prosecution has to prove in each instance. In that, we are going to break down the very elusive and seemingly complicated to understand RICO, so that everybody should be able to understand RICO by the end of this video. Good luck to me. Now, RICO targets a group's multiple instances of wrongdoing. That is what RICO is about. And to prove a RICO case, the prosecution has to prove three things. One, that an enterprise exists. Two, that that enterprise is engaged in racketeering activity. And three, that that racketeering activity affects foreign and interstate commerce. So we're going to talk about all three of those things, and we're going to start with the enterprise. By the way, we starting with RICO, which carries a maximum of 20 years because RICO is the first count in this indictment and everybody, including Jelaine Little, is charged in this count. Now, I want to talk about enterprise and it's, I don't really want to play with this because I want all the young people out there to understand what is happening. An enterprise as defined by law is a group of people who are associated in fact. And all this means is that if there is a thing and they can prove that a group of people are associated with it, in this case, it is a gang, then that is an enterprise. So in effect, just by you walking around claiming that you are in a gang or if they can prove you are in a gang, if we are to look at these three things that the prosecution is to prove as three strikes, you are in effect giving away a strike. Now, that doesn't mean that it's illegal to be in a gang. It just means that you are making it that much easier for a prosecutor to prove RICO. The other elements of this that they have to prove are pretty much basic gang protocol, that they are working together, that they have a common purpose, and that this enterprise exists beyond each member's criminal activities. All that means is that without the criminal activity, the structure, the functions, all of those things still exist. So that is all they have to prove, and that is the breakdown of an enterprise. All gangs are going to fit in this. It's not hard for a prosecutor to prove this. The second thing that the prosecution has to prove in RICO is that this enterprise is engaged in racketeering activity. Now, we talked about this before. Under this act, there is a list of crimes that are called predicate acts. This includes all of these violent crimes, drug crimes, there's fraud, there's embezzlement, there's extortion, and then there is a hundred crimes attached to each of these. For instance, there is a hundred ways to defraud somebody. There's mail fraud, wire fraud, credit card fraud, etc. All of these things fall under these predicate acts. Now, in 1985, Congress stated that a pattern of racketeering activity consists of two or more of these predicate acts and that these acts have to have relationship and continuity. Now, this on the surface sounds like it makes it difficult for a prosecutor to prove. But this can be proven by simply proving that the crimes in question are related to that enterprise by proving that they either benefited, furthered the goals of, or were done on behalf of that enterprise. So that is the breakdown of racketeering activity. Now, the third and final thing that the prosecution must prove in a RICO case is that the racketeering activity that these enterprises engaged in 
affected interstate and foreign commerce. Now, this deals with crossing state and international lines with these crimes. And this is the debate among all of the scholars. Many scholars and I myself do not believe that these street gangs that are being charged under this RICO Act affect state and foreign commerce, at least nowhere near to the degree of the mafia. I hope that one day these arguments become successful if they don't tweak the laws by then. So that is the breakdown of interstate and foreign commerce. This is always going to be a problem, but as you can see, by the many cases we cover, these prosecutors has, have not had a problem uh, proving this so far. Now, the rest of this is a cakewalk, y'all. We're going to walk right through these. Count 16 that she's charged with is assault with a dangerous weapon in the aid of racketeering. That carries 20 years, and that is for a December 6th incident in which her and others are accused of robbing and pistol whipping somebody in the Bronx. Now, to prove this, we're going back to those same five elements that were needed to prove the violent crime in the aid of racketeering charge against Star Brim. So if you haven't seen that, go back and check out that video. We explain it in detail, but you can see them on the screen. Count number 17 is a use of firearm and furtherance of that December 6th assault. So all they need to prove is that a firearm was used. That's not going to be very hard to do if, in fact, a firearm was used. Count number 18 is assault with a dangerous weapon in the aid of racketeering that carries 20 years. By the way, that use of a firearm and furtherance, that carries a minimum of seven years because the firearm was brandished. So count number 18, assault with a dangerous weapon in aid of racketeering, that also carries another 20 years, and that is for a November 29th incident in which her and others are accused of robbing and pistol whipping another individual in the Bronx. To prove this, the same five elements that we just put on the screen, count number 19 is use of a firearm and furtherance of that assault with a dangerous weapon that we just talked about that carries another minimum of seven years because the firearm was brandished. Count number 20 is a narcotics conspiracy. And because this particular conspiracy involves a kilo or more, the max on this is life. And the minimum is 10 years. So there's levels to it. A kilo or more is the highest level. It carries a max of life. Count 21 is possession of a firearm during a drug trafficking crime. So this, in this case, the firearm is not being brandished or anything of that nature. It carries a minimum of five years. So those are all accounts against Jelaine Little. She is facing a lot of time. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. It's the Crown Prince. Peace, y'all.